All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 70, and in today's episode, I will finally be revealing part two of the Red Pyramid Fluid Dynamics Modeling Series developed by good friend of the channel, John Sage, along with presenting some exceptional new footage from inside of these reaction chambers so that you can see the proposed inlet shaft and staining patterns for yourself. I will also be introducing a monumental new topic for discussion here on the channel, which is the communication encoded in the Egyptian pyramids. And I will show you a prime example that is directly related to my theory about the function of the northern pump shaft. Hopefully this has your attention. And if you're new to the channel and interested in a revolutionary new theory about the function of the Egyptian pyramids as related to the production of industrial scale chemicals, well, you've come to the right place. So please subscribe and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book, grab some merch. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for the support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the land of chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. So in part one of the fluid dynamics modeling series, I presented two remarkable demonstrations that were set up to test my hypothesis about the water fill mechanisms that were involved in the operation of the red pyramid. Specifically, that the water was used to compress water-insoluble gases into the upper vault of the reaction chambers. The first, which you can see here, that demonstrates the water-filling sequence, and I will put that in now. and the second that models the fluid dynamic patterns seen on the lower walls of the first chamber, the primary steam reformer, by positioning the water line in a similar location to the proposed fill shaft at the bottom of the northern pump shaft, and pay close attention to the flow of the water in this demonstration as it moves around the container. As you can see in that model, it produced the exact same fluid dynamic wave pattern in the container that you can see here, crashing up against the southeastern corner of the first chamber and flowing back around in this direction here. And of course, these staining patterns are still evident today here in the southeast corner and moving around into the northeast corner. And here is some new footage from inside of this primary reactor showing what you just witnessed in the demonstration. All right, and here we are inside the primary chamber. So let me start back here. So here, underneath this wooden floor is the pit that John proposed was the water inlet delivering water into the structure. And you can already see the fluid dynamic pattern developing here in the bottom section of the northern pump shaft leading into the primary chamber. And we're gonna go From here. 
into the primary chamber. And you can see that wave pattern here in the southeastern corner. Again, we saw in the experiment that the water crashes into this corner, producing that wave pattern. It continues around the chamber in a circular motion, producing this pattern here. Yusuf, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and again, thank you so much to Yusuf for taking the time to do this with me. And, and this is the southwestern corner. Again, you can see that wave pattern that developed as the water crashed into that corner. This is the northern wall. And you can see the prolific amount of strontium staining here. So I believe that the areas with the highest concentration of the staining would have been the areas that experienced the most significant fluctuations in temperature and pressure. So this is the southern wall of the primary chamber and look at how dense and nebulous the staining pattern here is in this portion. And I believe that that's an indication of the direction of the reaction. So the reaction is moving southward through the structure being pushed toward the final synthesis chamber. So it would make sense that there's more extrusions of the strontium and material on the southern walls because the pressure was pushing the reaction in that direction. And here's that pressure crack and damage to the connecting shaft. Stay tuned for more, ladies and gentlemen. Here from the land of Chem, Live in the land of Kem, the Red Pyramid of Dashur. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I've got brand new Land of Chem merch. This one here is the new Black on Black, the new fifth degree logo with an alchemical symbol for hydrochloric acid, black logo on the vintage black t shirt. Absolutely fire, and I'm incredibly excited for my new samples to arrive. But check out the website. I have a ton of different designs in many different colors. And don't forget the genesis for the entire Land of Chem YouTube channel, my book, The Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, limited first edition print copies, now available on the website, www.thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website. You can pick up some merch, grab yourself a copy of the book, Either way, all the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. All right, now on to an extraordinary update on this modeling series, which is a quite unexpected scale model of the fill shaft that John has proposed is located at the bottom of the northern pump shaft, which you can see here. And this is my favorite diagram of the Red Pyramid, as it shows not only this unexcavated pit here, but also this one here in the primary chamber and this shaft here in the secondary chamber, which I have proposed is the shaft used to drain the first two chambers. In my book, I propose that the fill shaft is located at the bottom of the primary chamber, but moving the location in no way changes the operation of the structure. I think that this pit here at the bottom of the northern pump shaft had a different function, which I'll be discussing here in just a moment, but it certainly could have been a multifunctional component that was also used to fill the internal chambers. So without further ado, here is an amazing demonstration showing this mechanism in operation. And here, as we reach the bottom of the northern pump shaft, this is the pit that's located at the bottom pump shaft. And you can see it's covered up by wood. And in the recent experiments, John showed us that this could be the possible inlet for the water that filled these chambers. There's also several other holes inside the chambers that could have also been the inlets, but this is that section. And you can see the unique configuration of stone here. And underneath this wooden platform is that pit.
Exceptional work once again, John, and I'm really excited to see where this goes in the future. So now on to an immense topic, which is the communication encoded in the Egyptian pyramids. I spent a lot of time examining this section of the structure when I was developing my theory about the function of the northern pump shaft, and I realized that the configuration of the stones and the small details about the execution of the masonry were intended to tell you exactly how this thing worked. And this is a theme that I have proposed in the book that to those who knew how to read these structures, analyzing the specific size and shape of each pyramid would reveal all of its secrets. For example, a tremendous amount of very sophisticated mathematics has been rendered by measuring and studying the Great Pyramid of Giza. This is a fact and it is even acknowledged by conventional historians, although they disregard it as coincidence. I also believe that the interior of these structures were also intended to be read, such as the height of the connecting shaft as related to the height of the methane fill line, the configuration of the reduced volume in the tiered vaults, the utilization of the black marker stone in the final chamber as an indication of the fill line, and so on. And here, within the masonry blocks of the western wall of the northern pump shaft, we have a very unique and intentional configuration of stones. And this image comes from Keith Hamilton's A Layman's Guide to the Red Pyramid. And he used data from the Asita project in the preparation of this scholastic article. So once again, this is an indication of how prolific the research from the Asita project truly is. And shout out to them once again. And I studied this area for quite some time and I came to a very interesting conclusion. Can you see this inclined block right here? This is a very strange configuration for a block in a wall, and I believe that this was positioned very intentionally to communicate exactly what was happening in this area. I have proposed that a stone block pump mechanism moved down this northern shaft, compressing water into the reaction chamber system. I believe that this stone here is indicating the stone block mechanism moving down the pump shaft. This is literally showing you exactly how this shaft functioned. Can you see this angled piece right here? This was done very, very intentionally because this is the housing or the stop block where the pump had reached its final resting position at the end of the shaft. There would be no reason to leave this as a sharp right angle because it would have eventually been smashed to pieces by the pump block. So this area was intentionally flattened out and this is absolutely an original part of the design feature that I believe is being very directly communicated by the stone masonry in this configuration. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the communication encoded in the Egyptian pyramids. This action of the pump block coming into its intended resting position here is indicated by the configuration of the stone blocks here. Every single small detail matters. And I hope this just blew your mind as much as it did for me because this is absolutely groundbreaking. And as I alluded to in the previous episode, when that pump block reaches its final resting position here that I indicated in the previous slide, it has pushed this entire volume of water into the reaction chamber system, raising the water level up in the final synthesis chamber, which compresses the nitrogen and hydrogen reactants, priming them for the conversion into ammonia gas. However, there is even more involved in this reaction process that I haven't explained thus far, so please subscribe and stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 70, the Red Pyramid Fluid Dynamics Modeling Series, part two. Thank you so much once again to John Sage for putting together that exceptional demonstration. It is an absolutely spectacular and somewhat indescribable feeling to finally see my ideas start coming to life. John, thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing what happens in the future. And ladies and gentlemen, in the next episode in the series, we will be discussing some very unusual properties and functions of methane gas. This is not just a fuel, ladies and gentlemen, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and stay tuned. Click that little notification button so that you do not miss the new videos when they premiere every single week. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book, grab yourself some merch, 
Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for the support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the land of Kim. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's video. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to the land of Kim here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.